Hey, and welcome back to another creepy TikTok. If you're enjoying these videos, please make sure that you're like, commenting, and subscribing. Uh, once we reach 100 subscribers, we're going to be having a giveaway, so make sure that you're in it. All right, enjoy your video. 15 days without sleep, the most inhumane Russian experiment. In the late 1940s, Russian researchers conducted a chilling experiment, one of the most inhumane ever recorded. They captured five political prisoners and subjected them to continuous wakefulness for 15 days using an odorless gas mixture. Initially, everything seemed relatively normal, but as each day passed, the situation grew increasingly dire. One of the prisoners began to scream uncontrollably, running around the room and shouting at the top of his lungs for three consecutive hours. What came out of his mouth was nothing but incoherent gibberish, a desperate attempt to conceal the horrors unfolding within. The other prisoners obscured the view from the small barred window, making it impossible for the researchers to witness the escalating nightmare. By the 15th day, the military intervened, and the researchers were forced to regain control. They turned off the gas and entered the room. The scene that greeted them was unimaginably horrific. The subjects had inflicted severe physical harm on themselves, but what was truly astonishing was that they were still alive. Strangely, their desperate plea wasn't for freedom or medical assistance, but a fervent request to be exposed to the gas once more. The experiment remains a chilling testament to the depths of human endurance and the haunting mysteries that it can unravel. I was horrified reading about this experiment. It's truly unbelievable that researchers could inflict such cruelty upon human beings. I wonder what those prisoners went through during those days and months why they would want to be exposed to the gas once more after enduring all that. Don't forget to follow and comment if you find the knowledge I share fascinating. Remember, don't come down so fast, Neil. You're afraid. You can't know what awaits you. None of us can. Wait, seriously? Stanley Kubrick. Why would he direct a fake moon landing? Dickie Nixon was Gaga for Strange Love. It was his favorite movie. And some say afterwards, Kubrick was given a lifetime contract at Warner Brothers with no constrictions. No. I mean, why? Why fake the moon landing at all? They already had all this alien tech. Going to the moon should have been a breeze. That's exactly the point. Everyone realized that going to the moon was going to be a big old fat waste of time and effort. So the government and the aliens thought it would be a nice way to sort of ease us humans into accepting that big, crazy technological shit was possible. I mean, if... You start giving people Velcro and computers, they're gonna start asking questions. So, the astronauts were flying into Hawaii the next morning to make their gallant return to Earth, right around the time I lost my first baby. If you could even call it that. And I have been stuck here ever since. Pick Charlie to win even before he got the candy bar. The entire world was looking for golden tickets, but somehow they all went to children that all happened to be like the same age. Did Wonka plan it this way by planting employees to give the kids the golden tickets? At the beginning of the original movie, Charlie buys chocolate, realizes he has a quarter left, and comes back and he's like, hey, can I get one for my grandpa Joe? And before he can even pick it out, this employee comes from behind the counter and specifically handpicks the one that has the golden ticket inside. Wonka wanted to find someone to run the factory after he was gone. Charlie lives close by and he clearly has a good heart. It took until the day before the factory tour, the day before the event, to find the right person to give this last golden ticket to. Wonka had a bunch of employees secretly working for him in the real world, like Slugworth. The candy man who gave Charlie the winning bar is named Bill. Bill is short for William, and Willie is short for William. Willy Wonka. But also in the theatrical versions of this show, they usually have the guy who plays Willy Wonka also play the Candyman, showing us that it's Willy Wonka all along. Also, when Wonka meets all the kids, he kind of disregards them. Like, he doesn't really talk to them, but he does talk to Charlie, and he tells Charlie, I've heard a lot about you. Let me know what you think. Also, my old Instagram was hacked and sold to a magazine company, so this is my new one. The craziest conspiracy theory about Megan Trainor is that her career was bound to fail after one specific day. Now, Megan, I know you're on TikTok, so let me explain. <laughs> From February 15, 2016, Megan D. Trainer was cursed to fail because on that day she won the cursed Best New Artist Award at the Grammys. Oh, I'm a mess. <laughs> 
Many of recipients of that cursed award infamously never achieve the same level of success again. Their momentum falls and they don't have very long careers after. And in the 90s, it was even worse because by 2000, 21 of the 36 winners never won an award ever again. A member of the one-hit wonder group Starland Vocal Band hated the fact that they won the award and called it the kiss of death and said they feel sorry for whoever wins it in the future. And a member of the one-hit wonder band Men at Work called it the best new artist slash kiss of death award. So after Megan won in 2016, people were worried for her. Her two albums in 2015-16 had really great debuts at number one and three and were on the chart for many weeks. Then her first album after the award only debuted at number 25 and only charted for three weeks, which I don't get why because it's so good and my favorite Megan Trainor album, which had many underperforming singles and y'all are very disrespectful for that because these were bops after bops after bops. She also said she didn't really get recognized after 2016. I did get recognized a lot back in 2016 and now there was a very long time where I didn't get recognized. I haven't heard me on the radio in a very long time. I'm gonna tell you how she's doing now in the charts but before I do make sure you follow so you finally know the crazy conspiracy theories about each of these celebrities and requests you want to see next. Now Megan is beating the allegations made you look her single and her album are rising on the charts and she has the number one song on TikTok so fuck that curse. In this 1999 sit down with David Icke, Arizona Wilder tells us why reptilians love human blood. Check this out. The blood, the blood is, has something, it has something in it. It has uh, secretions from, from uh, the pituitary gland and from pineal gland and it has a, um, a very strong uh, drug in it that they also I mean this is the one that help that keeps them from going uh, crazy and, and they it's like it's like heroin or like endorphins and it's much stronger but what they need is for it to be secreted in the blood is they need terrorization of, of their victims they before they are killed for their blood and or before or if a, a young woman is um, beginning to menstruate they need the menstrual blood and it they have to terrorize them to get this to come out in the blood and be secreted in the blood we have to understand that they need for the blood to be stressed so that it can release certain chemicals giving it the effect that they need uh, element comes and secretes out through the blood this all comes out through the blood at that time and it's at that point they are actually staring into the eyes of of the head of at, at, the, at some of these rituals or at a reptilian they are staring into the eyes of this person and their hell is a hypnotic gaze these reptilians have and it's it holds the victim in absolute an absolute trance in a trance of terror and then um, they are killed at that moment as they are staring into their eyes and not only do they do they they can't hold their shape when when this happens they the human shape the human shape they cannot hold they go back into reptilian shape as this is happening because it, it, it's a it's like an animalistic um, um, type of, of excitement of the kill these reptilians are so excited that they go into a frenzy and just start ripping the flesh off the humans uncontrollably. So much so that they can't hold themselves back. And the fat from the, the uh, intestinal area is highly valued as they use it on their skin. Um, and they will drink and they drink the blood and the blood is highly sought after and it goes according also to rank within uh, these creatures um, as to who gets what when and uh, their sacrifices have increased in, in the last, uh, it started increasing in uh, the early 80s. The amount that they were doing is increased. People who survived the impossible, part one. In 1999, Anna Bogelholm was skiing in Sweden when she suddenly fell through a frozen stream. She was stuck in the ice for 80 minutes until a rescue team was finally able to free her. When Anna was pulled out, she was given CPR and a defibrillator, but the emergency team was certain that she was dead. 
Anna arrived at the hospital nearly two hours later, by which point her body temperature was 56 degrees Fahrenheit. She was connected to an EKG, which showed no signs of life, and she was clinically declared dead. But doctors weren't giving up, as more than 100 medical workers worked in nine-hour shifts to try and revive her. Miraculously, they were able to warm up her blood and achieve a heartbeat, and then proceeded to put her on a ventilator for the next 35 days. Anna eventually woke up paralyzed from the neck down, and was initially angry at her friends for saving her life. But within the next few years, she somehow made a full recovery and now works as a radiologist at the same hospital that saved her life.